Well, 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 here we are back again for another garden tour. What you're seeing right now is actually last month in the garden. And I just wanted to show you this really quickly because I want to give you a little bit of a comparison of how things looked last month compared to how they look this month. The reason I want to do this is partly just to show myself because sometimes I go out there and I think things are growing slowly and I don't really see the progress day to day because I'm always out there and sort of scrutinizing every single plant. So it's really useful for me to just have an overview of what did it look like a month ago compared to now. And here you can see is present day and it's looking pretty good. All of the peppers have grown really tall. Lots of things are flowering. Much of the bare soil in the borders is now covered by foliage. The beds that have had really slow growth seem to be filling out a little more. And the fence is full to the top. I think I mentioned before this was my first year growing a cucumber and because we do have a problem with rats in the garden I have started covering the cucumbers with these little mesh bags and it seems to be helping protect them. I have had to do a little bit of hand pollination because the bees don't seem super interested in this plant and I've also moved the lavender nearby to entice them. I've done the same thing with the grapes here, covering them in the mesh, because last year we only got one bunch of grapes due to my pruning the plant back, and they all got eaten. So this year, hopefully we will get a few more bunches. Down at the bottom here, I have underplanted this with some black pansy, scabiosa, and black cornflower. And unfortunately, today I forgot to water this pot and the black cornflower seems to have perished. So that's really unfortunate. Fortunately, I have more seeds so I can try again. Speaking of seeds starting and restarting, here in the Hail Mary pot, it's mostly been taken over by some weeds. I did try to transplant out a few of the things that were in there. It was mostly Coreopsis that was thriving. And once I transferred it out, a lot of it died. Here are some poppies that I tried to pot on and they're not doing so well. I have some lettuces there too. I just keep trying to start seeds so that I can get the hang of it before next year. My hydrangea has flowered prolifically and is now kind of past its prime. I need to deadhead and just get it trimmed back. But as you can see, there was an abundance of flowers and this is actually after one deadheading already. In this bed, we now have uh, one arugula there and uh, there's actually a second wild arugula back to the left of that cabbage. Here's some radishes on the end here. My cabbages are actually doing really really well. Um, down at the bottom here I have some tatsoi and bok choy. There's one celeriac there about center screen and toward the left side some shiso that is starting to grow finally. I think the trick here was more water. This is the brassica bed that was doing so poorly and growing really slowly. The broccolis are finally starting to get some new leaves and that's following a really good pruning back. I basically cut out all the center stems and gave it a good feed. There is some guidelon that I've harvested from in the center of the bed. And then on the other end, I planted a little more of that tatsoi and pak choy where the chard was failing to thrive. I do have one chard that's kind of coming up, but again, that's been in there for three or four months now. So there's really been an onslaught of insects in this particular bed as well. I got some little pot stands for this strawberry pot because the ants were attacking it. It was getting really dried out and the plants were having a hard time thriving. I am getting some new flowers. So hopefully I'll get a few more strawberries. And in front of that is a catch fly that volunteered. I think it sprouted out of the seeds of the Soa Smile mix that I planted last year in a pot right here. These are my Mexican sour gherkins. They have managed to climb all the way to the top of this little teepee that I built for them and they're now grabbing onto this bird feeder and going beyond. Now, I'm having the same problem with these that I did last year and the problem is that I'm getting fruiting flowers or flowers with fruits behind them. Oh, there goes that one. Um, but no male flowers to pollinate them with and the pollinators aren't paying much attention to them either, so I've had maybe twice where male flowers and female flowers have come on at once and I've hand pollinated, but so far nothing is growing. My Soa Smile mix over here is mostly zinnias, but I just love this little area. I'm really glad I decided to just sow the seeds all over the ground because it's so nice to look at 
all different colors ranging from white to pink to yellow to even bright red and orange. There is some sulfur cosmos in the mix there. You almost can't see the succulent pot in the back anymore because these are so tall. There's a nice sulfur cosmos, really bright orange. There's a little bit of baby's breath that grows closer to the ground as well. My peppers, you can see there's still quite a bit of discrepancy. These two in the front are the same kind. These two here are the same kind. And the ones on the right are doing great. The ones on the left are barely growing. I am getting some fruits now. We have some anchos, some black jalapenos here. Those are really neat. I've harvested a couple of those. Here we have serranos. They're really tasty. That, those could probably be harvested pretty soon. Right next door, we've got some habaneros. And just a couple of those starting to come on. This is my first year growing these. And down at the end here, I have some bell peppers. Over in the other bed, I have ancho chiles again. Quite a few coming on this one plant. Next to that, we have some pasilla peppers. This is a variety called holy mole. These are padrone. There's a few of those coming on now. These are the guajillos, and they haven't really flowered yet. And back here we have some aji rico, and this one plant has been fairly prolific, just waiting for those to ripen. My stacked planters are really filling out with the herbs in them. The oregano and thyme flowers have been attracting a lot of bees, which I can see from the window, so that's really nice. My pelargonium just bloomed, and it is so beautiful and bright pink. I just love these clusters of flowers. And this is such a hardy plant. I've moved it three or four times since I bought it. It was one of the first ones I got, and it has survived and thrived. Back in this corner is my buddleia. I think I'm probably gonna remove this. It's grown about three times its original size since I planted it a couple of months ago, and I think it's just gonna be a little too big for this space. This is a lantana that I just bought. I just really like the three different colors on the flowers. Up above here, I have three volunteer tomatoes and a bacopa in the middle. And I've just been trying to get something sort of trailing established there, but I thought for now the tomatoes can live there. I don't know if they'll actually produce any fruit. They kind of got planted late and so far I don't see any flowers. Here's my liatris growing nicely. It'll probably, I don't know if it'll flower this year, probably not. It's got a couple of friends down here. They're just starting to get some true leaves. Just a really slow grower. Here's a little garden friend, jumping spider. We have lots of those. Here's the Gora. This is the Siskiyou pink variety, but it actually comes out mostly white. Really nice flower. It's grown a lot taller than I expected, so I might have to rethink where that is. The marjoram and the tarragon next to it are doing really well. They've really filled out the top of that planter. Tarragon could actually use some support, it looks like. This Millennium Allium is finally blooming and the pollinators who live next door in the Bug Hotel really love it. You can see some little mud plugs there in, the, in that stump. And then if we go down here, you can see where some of the leaf cutter bees have filled in the tubes with leaves. It's really cool to watch them go in and out of there and work on their nests. Over here we have tomatoes that are just starting to come ripe, and this is the San Marzano variety. This has been pretty slow growing, actually. I only have a few clumps of tomatoes coming on right now. Kind of slowed down in its growth. Uh, I think it may just not be getting as much sun as when I had tomatoes last year. This is kind of a pride and joy right now. This is the Asclepius curasavica, or blood flower, or tropical milkweed, whatever you want to call it. These flowers are fantastic, and the bees love them. I've even seen hummingbirds visit them. Really cool plant. The Gallardia is still flourishing over next to it. It's kind of shading this milkweed that I have growing back here. I haven't seen any flowers on it yet, and it's kind of late. I think I may move this over into the corner where the Budlia is so that it's got a little more sun and is not as susceptible to being overwatered. The plants look pretty healthy. They're not being attacked by aphids like they were last year, so hopefully I can get them to flower. Here's a little honeybee visitor that we've got. We've had quite a few of these around, although my main concern has been to attract the wild bumblebees that live in the area, along with hoverflies and other beneficial pollinators. Under the tree, things are doing pretty well. 
We've got yarrow and coreopsis back there. I actually moved my verbena, which was back in the corner with the bodleia, mostly because the flowers look too similar and I couldn't appreciate them as much. Uh, it has gone over now. It's all seeding. So I'm hoping I'll get some more in there. I've also got some salvia superba here, which is almost unflowering. The bumblebees and hummingbirds and butterflies have really enjoyed this as well. It is going to seed. My calendula is already almost done. Um, some of these plants are going to seed. These grew really, really quickly. I was surprised from the time that I direct sowed them earlier this year. And this is the spent flower head here and all of those little bumpy things coming out are going to be the funky shaped seeds. Over here is my New York Aster. This is a fall blooming Aster. I did see one flower on it a couple of weeks ago, but it's since gone. My purple cone flower, these are called Pow Wow Wildberry, are finally blooming. They were pretty slow to grow, but as you can see, they're now fully opened and even getting some new buds on them. Attracting pollinators just as I hoped they would. Back here is a beneficial insect mix that I planted, all of that little low green. And there's 16 different flowers and herbs that will grow out of there. Some of my coriander has gone to seed along with my parsley. And I'll just let those self seed. Back in the shade bed, the sweet alyssum is very prolific. The valerian is pretty much at the end of its flowering needs to be cut back now. The feverfew is almost completely done and has gone to seed and I do need to collect these seeds or they'll spread everywhere. Here's one of the feverfew that's still flowering. There's just one little plant left. It's really neat little clumped flowers. And behind the feverfew is Phacelia. It has nice light purple flowers and it's planted in a row here. And I've got a couple of Salvia farina chea that are coming in. Those were from last year. They're just growing very slowly. And my western sword fern is doing really well. This is probably the healthiest plant in my garden right now. The only thing that hasn't been attacked by pests and rats. So there you have it. Here's my garden at the end of July. And just wanted to give you a few little highlights to show you what's growing, what's thriving. Really proud of how all of the flowers have come in this year. If the vegetables have been a little stunted, the flowers were my main goal this year. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.